Have you been looking for that perfect little pouch pattern that you can add to your handbag making arsenal? Today, I'm going to be sharing you with you my favorite one. This is called the Open Wide Pouch. It is a free pattern. I will have the pattern link in the notes below. And the thing that makes it my favorite is that it does exactly what it says. When unzipped, it opens up wide. My customers love this because it makes this bag so usable and functional. Hi, I'm Bonnie with Aloha Bonnie Handbags, and I'm here to help you on your journey to learning more about handbag making. I'm going to be sharing with you tips on different steps throughout this pattern so that it can help you make a very professional finished product. So let's get started on this fun little open wide pouch. So here are the pieces that I have for the bag and you can see my corners have been cut. So I like to individually line them up and mark it with a marker and then cut them out individually with a scissors versus a rotary cutter. I find that I get a much more precise angle um, that way. And I use this ruler here uh, for doing that and I measure in from the corner and I get a precise measurement. I have had this ruler for a very long time. It's a quilting ruler for um, lining up bias squares to make sure they're on point and square and not skewed. So that is what I use, but you could use any ruler that you want. So if you're following along in the pattern, this is where I am at, where the zipper has been installed and you have the front and back pieces and then the lining pieces. So here is a tip. Remember, remember, do not do, not do the any top stitching at the zipper point right now. You, if you have um, this type of zipper, zipper that is gonna have a zipper head installed later, go ahead and separate your pieces. Um, sometimes it can be scary to do that, but you've already installed it, it should be just fine. And then go ahead now and do all your side stitching. And it just makes it a little easier, it's not pulling and tugging. And then later on, I'll show you why it makes the top stitching step a breeze to do because the zippers are separated and easier to work that way. So that's the tip at this stage. And then now we're going to um, stitch these pieces. And when I do them, I'm going to show you a tip for bringing these together and keeping it all nice and neat for you. So here on this next step, we're going to be stitching all around the edges. Um, you want to make sure that these crucial points match up front and back because if you don't line them up, that becomes obvious on your final project and your eye is drawn to that. So make sure that these are lined up. And you can see this overhangs a little bit, so I'm going to ignore that and make sure that this part here is lined up. And then, of course, the corner here is lined up. And then I'm going to be stitching across here and here. So I'm going to come across here and make sure that is lined up there. And I put a little clip there. And then on this portion, we have these zippers that I need to make sure that get pulled out of the way while I'm stitching and make sure that these line up nice and neat as well. And so I'll make sure I put a clip in there. Now the bottom piece here is where there needs to be a gap left so that you can pull your project through. Um, 
So I'm just going to make a clip here and a clip here. And then everything else is set to go. Now, here on this, what I like to do is I like to stitch the parts of the bag that are the easiest, number one, and also that will not be stretching. So I don't want to start with the fabric because lining up these two areas here is really crucial and sometimes um, wovens, even though this is a nice sturdy twill, will stretch a little bit out of the way. So I like to start um, in a place that I know is easy to sew. It's so easy to put the two pieces of cork together. There's not going to be any stretch, etc. On these end pieces here and here, be sure to backstitch nicely on those because there is tension there. Now, what I'm going to do here is, I wanna make sure I clip this so it doesn't stretch. And I'm gonna pull this around there. And then those pieces are butted up against each other. And I'm gonna double stitch there and then stitch around. get to bulky transition pieces like that where it's definitely folded over I just take a moment and do a forward and back it helps to compress things to, together a little bit for later on and because this is a zipper I want to check and make sure do I have to pull it out of the way I don't want a little piece of the zipper to get caught in the seam and then now, because again, like I said, this cotton can stretch a little bit. Now, if I need to, I will adjust that. And same thing as before, I'm going to bring this around so that the two edges are actually butted up against each other. that in place and then I'm leaving my gap here to turn and then I'm just coming down here and then I'm going to bring this last corner around and tuck it under there sure everything is good here one last time and again make sure that this is matched up just right because I have a tab here this gets lumpy and it pulls and distorts it a little bit so I have to check and make sure that everything is lined up and hold it in place with my fingers as it's sewn. And I have run out of bottom thread. All right, I am back. And although I've already stitched this here, I wanna bring this in to connect it. And there we go. And we have our curved edges here. And do not, do not clip. We're not bringing them together to save thread and clipping time. We're doing that to help us when we actually go to do the next step and look it's because it's stitched and it's touching all you have to do is pull this apart and you're going to do your next seam to gusset the corners and um, 
those two, that crucial point right there is already stuck together. Um, I, I learned that from another bag maker. She has a channel, um, Lauren Mormino. Um, and she mentioned that she does that on her, on her bags. And I was like, genius. And I have started to doing that and it really helps because when you're making a lot of bags and you want to make sure that they're consistent and professional looking every single time these types of um, steps I wouldn't call them tricks I guess you could call them tricks but these steps to doing things like that are really important so again, look here, it's folded up. So I wanna make sure that this gets folded up. I don't want it to be flipped behind inside and making a bulky seam. So that's something else you need to do. I am gonna clip this because cork is slippery. When you put the right sides together, it likes to push against each other and slip. So I wanna make sure that that gets clipped as I bring it here. I have an auto cutter on my sewing machine. The first machine that I got with that it came with it and I thought, oh, I'll probably never use that. And then I started using it. And at that time I was doing a lot of quilting, piecing, and oh my goodness, it was a lifesaver. I couldn't believe how much I would use it. Um, just make sure that it stays sharp. If you uh, service your machine yourself or you haven't serviced your machine in a long time and that cutting blade gets dull um, it can get stuck in a locked position and your sewing machine won't be able to sew and then you'll then you'll be forced to take it in to have it serviced so um, there is that but you would have to do a lot of sewing and not service it for a couple of years to get to that point so again, I'm just glancing down here. I'm seeing which way it's folded. It's folded this way. I'm gonna make sure it's there. And look, it, it just stays together. It's not gonna allow the stitching to come apart. Um, I really like that tip. And there we go, all done, just ready to pull this out and turn it here where it transitions from the exterior and the interior. You do want to make sure that you trim well to get that bulk out so that when we come back in the next step and do the top stitching, um, it can lay nice and flat. You can get a really nice top stitching. If, however, your fabric here is what I call shreddy. Now see here, it's up close. If, if, if it's shreddy or it looks weak or something, now is the time to repair that. And how would I repair it? I would get a small little piece of fusible interfacing, something that's woven. So a woven fusible interfacing. And I would, iron a little piece right across here on both sides and then trim it down and that'll help reinforce that spot because it's going to be a high tension point when you turn your bag out and you do your top stitching and if the weave in your fabric is loose thin etc and you can already start to see a bunch of shredding now is the time to catch it don't think afterwards or you'll just um try it and see before you put tension on it and turn it out now would be the time to repair and reinforce that spot 
So now remember, we separated the zipper and the zipper pool has not been installed. So you didn't have to worry about whether you left the zipper um, open or not because it's open. And then you just reach through and we're just going to pull everything out and turn the bag right side out. And here we have it all turned out. Now's the time to check your um, seams are here. Are they lined up? Is everything good to go? I do want to mention that this little tab here is not in the um, original pattern, but it's easy to add and I like to have it because when you go to zip, pull the zip here and sometimes you need a little something to open the zip. And so I added that. It's just a nice little design feature. Some people add a little D-ring, etc., but I wanted to keep this as minimal for the hardware and I use it more as a pull. So our insides are over here and you do want to leave this opening until the very last to close it up. Um, just remember to um, close it up before you give it away or use it. Um, so there we are on this step and now we're just going to tuck this all in here. And now we're going to do the top stitching. So if it's bulky and what have you like this, so sometimes what I like to do is I will add some clips on here and because it's bulky, I do find that you need these longer clips. The little ones will snap and break. Um, and I just put that on there and then I just leave it sit and do something else for a little bit, take a break, etc. And it just retrains the, this, whatever this is, whether it's gonna be vinyl or cork or fabric to just, soften up and go folded in a different direction. It doesn't take long. Um, if you're gonna do it overnight, then you could just finish it. This would be a good place to stop. But I do like to do that and it just helps to reset it a little bit, almost as if you're giving it a little press with the iron and to hold these thicker ends into place a little bit um, before we go on to the top stitching. Again, you see here now something you might want to do, you can see it's getting a little shreddy looking here. I didn't do it earlier. Um, I'm going to do it now. I'm just going to trim this off and then I'm just going to burn it with a lighter to keep that from continuing to shred as I fiddle with it. So this bag has been sitting for about an hour with the clips. I went and had some lunch and I'm going to be removing these. And now I can see here, yes, it's much softer. It's not popping up um, and it wants to stay down in place. So that gentle method works very well. Um, before I get started on the top stitching, I just wanted to show you a couple of things. This is the end where the zipper pull is going to come across and it's going to sit here. So this portion right here is going to get a lot of visual. People are going to be looking very carefully at this end of the bag. So you want this stitching here to be smooth and really on point. So when you get here, make sure that you take extra care and time making this end look exceptional. This end here is actually, much of it is going to be covered by the little zip tab on the end here. So this is the location where I like to start. Now, it's not a good idea to actually start on the lumpy, thick seam allowance. So your choice, I tend to go towards the back. Um, I will start here and come around and end that way. So that's a little tip 
um, for hiding that start and stop location that might not be as attractive. Another tip for top stitching bags like this, um, especially because we haven't top stitched it before and we're doing both the exterior and the lining as well. And I like to make it in a position where I can really easily make sure I'm tugging this away from the seam here as tight as possible. So what I like to do is actually turn this bag inside out and top stitch from the inside. Let me show you. So here the bag has been turned inside out and I can easily grab this softer fabric and pull it tight away from where the original stitching was here. And then when I go to the sewing machine, I'm going to start on the side that I want and I'm going to lay this down flat and I'm going to top stitch it like this. So this is how I top stitch the exterior from the inside. So I'm pulling away this top so I'm actually accessing the exterior and I can see if I need to pull down the lining fabric. Sometimes on machines, even though the presser foot is up, you can actually access more space by lifting it up even higher. And that's what I can do on this machine. So you can check and see if your machine does that as well. So just because your zipper foot, your presser foot is up, it doesn't mean that it can't go higher. Just try to pull the lever up a little bit more. You may get just enough to get those thick seam allowances up under. And I'm reaching under and making sure that that lining is pulled tight and away and I'm adjusting where I'm at. I want to make sure that I have a nice tight and very even seam stitching here. Um, I like to use this tiny skinny foot. It's an eighth of an inch and I think it makes a really pretty top stitch. So here we go. get to that portion that I've told you is going to have a lot of um, eyes on it and a lot of attention pull put there, I really make sure that the lining is, is pulled way down and that this top um, exterior fabric actually starts to curve in just a little bit. It's really thick here as well. previous stitching, I'm going to go over it for about a quarter to a half inch um, to lock those stitches in place and do just a tiny tack stitch. So there you have it and I will show you the next step. So here you can see, because of that method of doing the top stitching, the top of the bag pops open. And it's going to pop open like that, even when you have the zipper attached here. And that's why it's called the open wide pouch. So I'm gonna be putting on the zipper pull. And then after that, I will be putting on the little zip end. 
And then what I'm doing for that one is the little squares that I cut out to make the gusset, save them. They are perfect for making the little pull ends on the zippers. I'm going to leave it exactly how it is because when I fold it over, that's a nice size. My thumb and forefinger fit on there. And I'm going to leave the width that's easily trimmed off afterwards. And it'll give me a little bit more um, to look at and work with and hold on to while I'm actually doing the sewing. One thing that I do like to do is on these ends that I'm going to be folding over is put double-sided tape. I used to use clips and hope for the best that these two edges would line up every time. I have since converted and said the double-sided tape is worth every penny. It doesn't take much and it holds it into place quickly and easily every single time I put these on. So here we have it with the double-sided tape already attached. It comes in a little roll like this. And then this is one fourth of an inch wide. I like to use the wider tape. I also have an eighth of an inch. I use that sometimes, but the quarter inch, I wanted to give it a good stick and make sure that it stayed in place before I sewed it. And then you just remove the paper here. It exposes the adhesive and you sew right through it. I don't have any problem with extra residue on my needles but you can easily wipe it off with a cotton ball dipped in alcohol. And here we go, tape has been removed. And then I will just place that on here. And then when I fold this over, you can see that the extra edges really helps to pinch it in place on there and then what I will do is I'll go to the sewing machine and I will sew along the edge where this zipper tape goes in because I want to make sure to catch that edge of the zipper tape. I'll come down across and up. Another thing to note, if you do your zipper measurements exactly as the pattern states, you'll get a tiny little zipper end here with a little tab. If you don't like it fiddly, if you want it a little bit longer, etc., please note that you should add a few inches to your zipper length as opposed to what is listed in the pattern. So the pattern does an exact measurement and you get a tiny tab. It can be a little fiddly if you are not used to sewing with little pieces like that. So again, add one to two inches to the length of the zippers as noted in the pattern and it might be a little bit easier for you to stitch. If you fall back to a default method of top stitching on these types of bags, you will not get that feature of open wide on the top. I have done it more times than I care to admit. In fact, Right here, I did it, and I'm going to tell you that I have to unpick the top stitching on this in order to do it correctly because it will never open up wide like this one. That is a crucial step in this really fun and free pattern.